It is time for our annual top 10 list for a look into my PC, but this time we have a completely new top 10 list than we did the last year. So I'm very excited to share this with you. Let's get right into it. Welcome to the most passionate content for card collectors on YouTube and possibly the whole entire internet. As usual, I am your host, Jake Roy, 90s Meatball Cards here on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and uh, a little bit more TikTok and some Instagram reels, all kinds of fun stuff, maybe even some more YouTube reels. We'll see what the cards hold. So, no pun intended there. Uh, yeah, we're looking into my top 10 list. This is going to be dominated predominantly by one player. You can probably guess who that is. But like I said, this is going to be completely new list. I'm actually a little bit overdue for the list. Thank you, Joe, for letting me know. Uh, so the last time that we did this list, it was a little bit before the National in Chicago. So this year, you might have seen some of my pickups from National, a lot of the stuff from the pickups of last year, and all kinds of stuff that have been coming in throughout the year are going to make this list up. So like I said, the top 10 is completely new. There are a couple of honorable mentions, as we always have, that I will update you with where they have been on the list prior. Uh, so some big changes, and uh, we're going to do a little bit differently. While I rank these based on their numeric value, their monetary value, uh, we're not going to talk too much about the card value because a lot of these cards almost all of these cards in fact sell very infrequently a lot of them are very very hard to find very low pop counts if they're graded or just low very low print runs so a lot of them it's really you know we'll take a look at the card ladder uh you know estimates on the value but it's really a lot of them haven't sold for over a year or so at least not publicly some of them privately so uh we're gonna you know show that information from card ladder but we're not going to talk too much about it we're going to talk more about the card itself rather than the value just a little bit of a difference but uh something i think makes sense based on the information so i uh, just want to preface that but let's get right into those cards all right here we go starting with number 10 on the list so here we've got the 9697 flare showcase this is the legacy and this is the row one so there are three rows so three different legacies if you will uh, but they're all numbered to 150 so you flip it over on the back you see it's numbered to 150 so this uh this is one that you probably remember uh this actually is the only one that's still from the list uh and this was at the number 10 spot actually no this was not on the list last year it was on the list the year before at the number seven spot so it fell off it's back on if I remember correctly this year at number 10. uh so this is one uh based on the value this is one of the few that i think has sold in the last year raw um based on the on the value it really feels like something that should probably get slabbed so uh you know i'll figure that out i'm thinking maybe uh you know sgc or bgs and just waiting it out um for this one but this you know as the rest of these are <laughs> long-term uh, lifelong PC cards. So uh, it just is something based on the value I think should be protected. Uh, so that is something that I wanna do at some point in the future, I think, uh, but you know, it's not something I think is gonna be like a 10, um, but that's, uh, that's number 10. So the one that has been on the list before, just not last year. So number nine, you might remember this from the national recap video. So we've got the 9798 Topps Stadium Club Triumvirate this is the Illuminator in a BGS 9.5, 9.5. Uh, no subgrades, but it's a, it's a gem mint. So again, I'm still debating what I want to do with that. But this is just an absolutely gorgeous card. You know, a, an incredibly intricate die cut on an acetate with the refractor both on the front and on the back as well. That's one of the telltale signs if you're looking to know if you have an Illuminator or if you have a Luminous or an Illuminescent, then uh, you want to see if it has a refractor on the front then it's a luminescent. If it has the refractor on the front and the back, it's an illuminator. And if it has no refractor, it would be a luminous. So that's one of the telltale signs. Uh, these are very, very extremely rare cards. You know, there is not a stated print run, but the estimated print run is a hundred or less from what I've heard. Uh, so I'm not going to put a, a stake in the ground as far as how many exactly. Uh, but you know, something I got at national again, the grade being very high is not an easy thing to get on these cards because they are so delicate and so intricate. 
I do have a Kevin Garnett from the same series uh, that I don't expect to grade well, but that is with PSA right now. So it'll be interesting to see how that grades. Like I said, I don't expect it to grade very well. I do know there's one issue uh, on one of the die cut parts uh, that at least I think it's an issue, but we'll see what PSA thinks. So uh, this again, like I said, no public sales for this that I could find uh, in this grade. Uh, a couple of old public sales raw so you know really guessing at the value based on you know what i was able to do but i got this in a trade at, at national so you know we could do some fuzzy math as far as what the two cards are that i traded for it worth and all that but um you know very excited to have this in my collection uh, at long last something that i, I didn't know I'd be, <laughs> I'd be able to find for a very long time because there's so few of them all right, number eight we have here is uh, the 96-97 Flare Showcase Legacy. Uh, so very similar to the first one we saw, but this one is the uh, Row 2, so the base version, if you will. Uh, and this is in a PSA 9 as well. So that's going to make it worth a little bit more. But again, very hard to gauge the value. The only way to gauge it really is going off of raw sales and doing some fuzzy math on what it would be as a PSA 9. I believe the last time I looked, this is uh, a pop two. There are no tens for this card, if I remember correctly. Uh, I'm not familiar with the BGS pop report or, you know, SGC or other grading companies, but uh, as far as PSA goes, that's what I recall. So again, this is really kind of a guesstimate on the value. Could it be, you know, less than the, the triumvirate? Could it be more than it, you know, could it be more than the next one? It's, it's really hard to know for sure. Uh, but one that I, I got and graded myself, so that's always really fun as well to see, uh, you know, that you have this as a, you know, a barometer for how well these cards could be uh, <laughs> when getting them graded. So, uh, like I said, you know, 150 copies of these. I think this one is just absolutely beautiful. Uh, the 96 series really hit it out the park with, with how beautiful those cards in all three of the rows were. Uh, you know, 97 there are some rows that some people like more than others there's one that's horizontal versus vertical you know so there's some other stuff going on there i think that's an absolutely gorgeous set as well but uh 96 being the first one uh after they went from flare to flare showcase and had that hollow foil and stuff um i think really set a very very high bar something i really love and i'm really glad i have these two legacies all right, the next one on the list here, again, you saw this probably from the national video, but this is the 9697 EX2000 credential of Penny. You can see it's in the raw card or pre-grade uh, from SGC as a authentic. So this is one that I'm gonna get slabbed. Uh, I'm debating sending it to SGC. I think that's probably gonna be the way I go. I'm expecting that it'll probably just get an SGC authentic, but there's an outside chance I might send this one to PSA. Uh, again, I would expect it probably would just get PSA authentic. I think uh, maybe there's an issue with the, uh, you know, the cut of it or something, but I'm also a little bit nervous because I have gotten stuff from PSA that they sent back ungraded that they said that was miscut. Uh, I don't know if that might be the case here, but that is a very common issue for this set. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. But the uh, first credential set from the 96 series, these are gorgeous looking cards. This is a very uh, iconic set, very, uh, you know, groundbreaking set in a lot of ways. Not only the credentials, but also the base set. So, you know, you flip it over on the back and you can see there it's numbered to 499. So not the lowest numbered thing in the world, especially when you compare it to the legacies from the same year. Uh, but these are very important for a lot of reasons and just very desirable because of the, uh, the look of them. Um, you know, you have that acetate in the middle with a player cut out, just very intricate stuff from the EX series throughout the 90s. Uh, very happy to have this again. This is one that I had passed on in a trade in the prior year's national. So this year at national, when I saw one, uh, I was very excited to have it. The ones that I passed on, ironically enough, it was, you know, my options in the trade were having a raw copy or one that was PSA authentic. And I passed on both of them, uh, you know, so now I've got one that, that is SGC authentic. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's uh, number seven, I believe we're at on the, on the list. The next one here, we've got a big one, or at least a very big one for me uh, and a lot of other player collectors. So 99, 2000 Topps Stadium Club first day issue refractor. So that is a mouthful. Actually, it's Top Stadium Club Chrome. I think I might have missed saying that. So these, if you flip it over onto the back, are numbered to just 25. This one, the numbering is a little bit faded. Adding a lot to it, in my estimation, is it being also a BGS 10. Not a black label, 0.5 away on, I think, the corners, it says there. 
uh, from being a black label, but I'm very happy to have this in a BGS slab regardless of the grade, but uh, BGS 10 makes it a little bit sweeter. And getting this in a trade, uh, I actually traded away a card that I got in a PSA order. So again, if you've you know, followed along the channel very closely, you've seen some of the stuff progress as time has gone on in real time. Uh, so very nice to have you know a childhood card come back, get a PSA 10 and be able to trade it for a childhood dream card of mine. Uh, that's you know really a dream scenario. So very excited. But again, there's only 25 of these. There are no other BGS 10s. There are no PSA 10. So there is really no way to know for sure what it's worth because this is not going to come for auction. This card is not going to be available. <laughs> this is forever stuck in my PC. Uh, you know, so knowing what it's worth, you'd have to see if a PSA or a BGS 10 was graded by somebody else that has a raw copy and what that might sell for if they were willing to sell it. Uh, so it's again, a big guess on what it's worth. It's numbered 25 and it's a pop one with none higher. So a very hard card to track down uh, in any grade or ungraded, uh, but especially in this as well. So um, again, so much that I love. This was a childhood dream of mine that I thought I would never be able to obtain. And, uh, and I was, so very happy, very happy for that to say the least. Next one, a divergence from Penny, but another PC guy, but not basketball. So a lot of differences here. But again, you probably saw this in the national recap video. So we've got the 98 Fleer Tradition Playmakers Theater of Brett Favre. Uh, just a beautiful set. And uh, a lot of people, myself included, think that this looks better than the basketball version. Uh, you know, so flip it over on the back. And these are serial number to 100, just like the basketball ones. Uh, you know, and this, especially with Brett Favre there, with the colors of the Green Bay Packers uniform and the colors on this card, uh, I think they go very well together. You know, so another one that this being a PSA 7, not the highest grade in the world, but uh, these typically don't grade terribly well. It's not the hardest card in the world to grade, but, uh, you know, there's only 100 of them and uh you know flare tradition were opened by kids and you can see a lot of hollow foil on there and a lot of embossing can lead to chipping for sure so uh you know judging the value on this again is a very difficult you know guessing game really uh you know so we can only speculate what it might be worth and uh it's just something that is is beautiful and uh you know again this is one that i plan to have in my collection uh you know for the long haul, I don't expect that I'm going to move this because even if I was to get the penny or another basketball card, I would want this because like I said, this is, uh, you know, my PC guy from nineties football. I love getting Brett Favre cards as a Packer fan uh, and a big Brett Favre and Reggie White fan. Uh, but also I think that this card looks better than the basketball version. So I like having both of them, uh, especially when they're PC players. So again, <laughs> lots that I love about this, a uh, little bit of a Homer pick there. All right, next one, you saw this, I'm sure also in the national recap video. So uh, another childhood dream card of mine, the Topps Chrome 9899 Topps Chrome Apparitions Refractor. And these are serial number to 100. This is also happens to be a PSA nine, which I believe is a pop one or two. I do think that there is a 10 out there. Uh, but I'll, I'll flash up the pop count if I can get a hold of that. Uh, you know, so again, a guessing game as far as what it's worth. I know what I, I got it for in the trade that I made, uh, but very happy. Again, this is one of those cards that I saw the tops version that's foil. I saw the tops chrome base, you know, chromed out version. Uh, but I always dreamt of what the refractor would look like because I thought that the chrome looked so cool with all the colors that having a refractor on it would really lend well to this card. Uh, and once I saw it in person, I was not disappointed. I did have a Michael Finley before, so I knew what that had looked like, uh, but of course I wanted the penny. So the Michael Finley was kind of like a placeholder until I could get the uh, the big PC guy for me, which is the penny, which again, there's only a hundred of these cards. I thought that this was a card that if it came up for auction, I would be priced out of, uh, it'd be very difficult for me to get. So again, getting it how I did, uh, you know, worked out very well. The timing couldn't have been better. Uh, and a PSA nine also, uh, I'm very happy when I can get a nine in the collection. Uh, cause those basically are cards that you don't see any flaws with the, with the naked eyes. So to me, it looks pretty much flawless, but again, uh, you know, really no public sales of a PSA nine at all. Very few sales of any of these, and they are going to be old sales. So again, we're using that, uh, algorithm from card ladder to estimate the value on this one. Next one we've got here is the uh, one that we picked up on the first day of the Nationals, so the 97-98 NBA Hoops High Voltage 
or 500 volts. So this is obviously set number to 500 as the name would indicate with 500 volts. Uh, so the base version of it is called high voltage and then this is the parallel of that insert, which is 500 volts. So some people call it uh, high voltage 500. Some people just call it 500 volts. There's all different kinds of names, but technically it is called the 500 volts. Uh, it says it right there on the card, <laughs> if you're questioning where I get that from. So uh, this is another just absolutely beautiful card. You know, these uh, serial number to 500, but a lot of people say they don't show up nearly as often as you would expect for a card number to 500. So there's speculation, are there a lot sitting in unopened products? Are there some that have gotten destroyed or were there just not all 500 produced? You know, you can uh, let me know your theories down in the comments. Uh, you know, I just think that regardless of any of that, it's just an absolutely gorgeous card. So a lot of times you'll see these sell for more than other cards that are numbered to 500 or less, uh, just because of how beautiful they are, how very 90s they are. Great picture here on the penny that I think really, you know, captures a lot of what was exciting about him playing. Uh, you know, so a lot of fun stuff for me personally in this. I did have a chance recently in, well, in the last year or so, I should say, to get the Kevin Garnett, which I was hoping I could have done, couldn't work out the deal, but the Kevin Garnett picture compared to the Penny, uh, you know, doesn't even hold a candle to it in my opinion. All right, number two on the list. So this was the big pickup from the Chicago National. So this is the 97, 98 EX 2001 Jambalaya. So this is, you know, one of my all time favorite, just, you know, visually appealing cards. Obviously you got the die cut, but the, uh, surprisingly for me, the, the mini lenticular, uh, three dimensional design in the background is just gorgeous. Uh, you know, I don't typically like lenticular, but this is, like I said, almost like a, a mini lenticular. You don't really see the ridges, uh, which is what I don't like about the other ones. Uh, and it's not trying too hard to make the player be integrated. The player's really printed on top. I mean, I could just go on <laughs> for, for a very long time about this card. Uh, so in the BGS nine, that's nice as well. Uh, authentication is definitely something that I, I look for with these cards. So Having something graded uh, is a nice bonus for sure on these. Uh, so when I got this again last year in a trade, uh, very happy to have gotten it in BGS9. It's also got very good subgrades for BGS9. It's uh, it's o only a, a half grade away on the edges from being a, a min gem for uh, BGS. So that's something that is also a plus for me. Um, you know, so looking at this one, it is one that we have seen come up for sale a little bit more in a BGS nine than some of the other cards in you know their respective grades on this list. Uh, but all of those have had worse subgrades and for BGS cards, subgrades do matter, especially when you're close to being a gem. Um, you know, so that's definitely a big plus for this one. So, you know, looking at the most recent sales and the most recent values, uh, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if one the head subgrades matching this sold for a little bit more than those, depending on, you know, all the other criteria as well, you know, in terms of like, you know, when it came up and, you know, who was selling it and all that type of stuff. So, uh, you know, we can look at that value. Obviously it's a BGS nine, you know, and that matters, uh, you know, but I wouldn't be surprised if again, one that's closer to this one uh, were to go for a little bit more than those. You know, this is another one that's not serial numbered, but uh, they say that the print run could be anywhere from like 250 to like 100, 125. So somewhere around that ballpark is what people guesstimate, but that's really a guess. Uh, there's really no easy way to do any sort of fuzzy math on that one. So, you know, just absolutely gorgeous card. One that I'm, you know, still elated to have in my collection. So very exciting. Again, another childhood dream of mine for sure. All right, before we get to the number one, a few honorable mentions. So here we've got the 9899 upper deck. This is the bronze parallel. So you've got Penny on the front and you've got Horace Grant on the back. And what makes this one really special is on the back right next to Horace Grant. It's number one out of a hundred. So when I saw this one pop up, you know, this is not the most breathtaking parallel. Uh, you know, honestly, the bronze color on this is, is you know, an interesting choice, I guess we could say. Uh, not necessarily the choice that I would make uh, for a parallel, but it is what it is. Uh, but the serial numbering of it being one out of a hundred was something that I thought was a very cool piece to it. Uh, this is one that I'm almost certain at this point that I'm going to send off to SGC. And the reason for that is because the serial numbering is really the really cool piece about this. And I like how SGC puts the serial number on uh, the, you know, on the flip on the front, especially when this is serial numbered on the back. 
I think that's a really cool thing that I like. So I don't expect this one to grade terribly well. So that's that's another reason why, because it's more about the serial number for this card. Um, not that this is going to be one that's going to be in my collection for you know the duration of my life. It might, uh, but not a you know not something that I need to keep <laughs> a jersey numbered card of Penny, but uh, something cool. So when I picked it up, since I didn't have any in my collection, uh, you know this was a cool one to pick up as well. The next one here, very similar to another that we've seen on this list, but this is the 99-2000 Top Stadium Club Chrome. First day issue, this is not the refractor. So this is the one that's numbered to 100. Uh, and this is number 64 out of 100. But the uh, thing here is, uh, you know, I got this one raw, sent it off and got a PSA 10. Uh, very excited about that. This is a, you know, recently graded, very recently graded card. Um, you know, so this is one that's, you know, it's a pop one. There are none higher. There's only 100 cards of this one printed. Uh, uh, so again, we could guesstimate based on how raw copies have sold when they come up, uh, what this PSA 10 might be, uh, you know, but this is another one that's, you know, essentially a one of one unless there's another one that gets graded and gets a 10. So, uh, you know, we could guesstimate the value, but this is a, a very rare card. So, you know, does it belong on the top 10 list? Maybe, uh, I'll let you be the judge of that. I'm actually going to put the honorable mentions off to the side here. Uh, all right, the next honorable mention we have is the 9899 uh, UD Choice. This is the Prime Choice Reserve. You can see here it's actually called the Premium Choice Reserve on this. Um, that's not what it's actually supposed to be. If you actually look at what's stamped on the front of it, it even says Prime Choice Reserve on the front. So uh, you sometimes will find these listed as Premium Choice Reserves, not just because that's the way that, you know, this one got labeled, but, uh, you know, it is something that happens from time to time. So uh, I like having it protected in the BGS slab. This is basically BGS authenticated, uh, but it's not graded. Uh, so something that I might want to get graded, you know, again, we've talked about my preferences on, on BGS grades being an 8.5 or better. Uh, not sure if this would get that or not, you know, haven't seen it raw to really know, but I would like it to say prime choice reserve. That's really why I would think about getting this re-slabbed. Uh, but this card is one also as a kid, I dreamt about pulling one. We opened a lot of UD choice. That's why, you know, the really the pinnacle of one of the cards I'm tracing is from this set. Uh, but this one being number 200, we didn't pull any, you know, any pennies or any other players for that matter. Uh, so when I was able to get this again in a trade uh, for a Luca rookie, which is worth significantly more than the cards that I got in return, but you know, it was, it was a great trade for me to get a lot of great PC cards that I'm very happy, you know, and this is one as well that uh, I haven't seen any public sales of this, you know, really ever. Uh, so no idea what this would be worth. I would love to hear your guess. Uh, there's only a hundred of them though. So that's that. Next one for the honorable mentions. This is another one from the national this year. Again, very happy with the trade that I made. This is one that I've been looking for for a very long time. So this is the 9899 Skybox Molten Metal Fusion Titanium. There's been some people with posts that to try to confuse this set, uh, but that is what it's called. So this is the parallel version of the insert set of Fusion. And, uh, you know, just a beautiful one. Really looks very similar to the Platinum Portraits from 97, 98 Metal Universe. Uh, but this also adds some gold to it. Also adds a color picture of the player along with that laser face and uh, also a laser cut name for the player. I think, you know, this set looks better than the 97, 98. I might be in the minority for that, but uh, that's my opinion. So one that I'm very happy to get, one that's very hard to find. When it does, this set gets a lot of attention. So these cards have been going for quite a bit, uh, but they, you know, this one hasn't shown up for sale a ton recently. So again, that adds to the reason why I wanted to get it uh, so badly in my collection. So, uh, you know, one that I guess probably could sneak into, uh, into the top 10 here, uh, you know, again, would love to hear your thoughts on that. One that I might take a close look to see if it's worthy of grading, but I don't think these cards would grade terribly well. So I don't, I don't think that it would really add much to the card. Again, if you want it for protection, but this one, uh, you know, unlike the 97, 98, you don't have any of the laser cuts that go to the edge of the card, which is good. Uh, so I don't think this is one that's, you know, I, I'm gonna grade, but we'll see. Maybe you might be surprised next year. <laughs> We'll see. 
All right, next one on the honorable mentions. This has been on the list before, and it is not anymore. Uh, you know, might be a very big sh surprise to some. It was a surprise to me. So this is the 93-94 Fleer Ultra Scoring Kings Michael Jordan, uh, one that I had raw that I got graded, got a PSA 7. Uh, you know, happy with that grade. I was hoping it might get an eight, but I, I thought that was kind of the maximum potential. I was hoping it wouldn't get a six, which luckily it didn't do that. So um, this one, um, I didn't have the first year we did the, the top 10. The second year, it was number two on the list. And last year was number four on the list. This year it is completely off of the list. Uh, you know, that could change in the future. Uh, you know, prices fluctuate from time to time. But this is one of those cards that condition really matters. There's no shortage of them. But as you start getting into the better condition copies, the print, uh, or I'm sorry, the pops get significantly lower and lower and lower. So, uh, you know, a seven typically tracks about the same as a good condition raw copy. Uh, you know, so that's typically what you see. Again, this is one that definitely does come up for sale. So you have a pretty good idea of the value of this one. So it's interesting. Some of the stuff that does come up for sale more that have bigger print runs, uh, you know, that aren't the hardest cards in the world to find uh, are the ones that have gotten knocked off this list, it seems. Uh, and the ones that are harder to find and, you know, more scarce for whatever reason, uh, whether it's the grade or the print run of the card are the ones that have kept on the list. Uh, so this is one of those cards that, again, I've talked about a bunch. Uh, I think that this is a very classic Jordan card for any Jordan collector, any 90s collector. This is one that uh, brings a lot of people a lot of nostalgia, brings a lot of people back into cards that have been out of cards for a long time. So just one of those cards that I'm glad to have uh, and hold in my collection for a very long time. The next and uh, last honorable mention, another one that was on the list that has gotten bumped off. So the 2003 Topps LeBron James rookie card. So this is Topps flagship, Topps paper, whatever you want to call it, uh, his base rookie. So again, no shortage of these out there. These have fluctuated a ton in value. I think the all-time peak was about $3,000 for a PSA 9. I think the the first time that this was on the list, it debuted at number nine. I, I'm pretty sure it was a raw copy uh, the first time on the list. Um, then the next time it was number one on the list. I think that was after I'd gotten it graded. And then last year it was number two on the list. So, uh, you know, now it's, now it's off of the list altogether. So it's, uh, you know, ridden quite a, a ride <laughs> in my collection over the last four years. Uh, you know, I've had it since I was a kid. So happy that when I got it graded, it got a nine. Uh, but again, there's no shortage of these there. Uh, you know, the, the print run was, you know, it was a common card and uh, really you're just looking to get a better condition copy or the best condition copy you can afford, I guess, uh, you know, as the case may be. So, uh, you know, happy to have this. I, again, this is one that I think is an iconic LeBron James rookie card. I love draft day photos. This is LeBron's draft day photo with that all white suit, which is kind of, uh, you know, comedic at this point in time. Uh, a lot of people clown him for that suit, and, you know, the appearance of it. But, uh, you know, really him holding up that that original Cleveland Cavaliers 23 jersey, I think, is is the really cool part. You know, I like draft day photos. I might be in the minority for that. But this is that's something that makes me really enjoy having this card as, you know, really the pinnacle of the LeBron James cards that are in my collection because I don't have a ton. But this is one of the one of the favorites that I have for sure all right so number one on the list we have got 97 98 fleer ultra this is the ultra stars gold again you saw i picked this up at the national on the last day very exciting uh and luckily enough uh, the uh the kind folks at card letter captured uh the deal taking place for this card uh you know so going there with nick and uh having him fill me was was kind of a surreal experience uh, but a lot of fun to have that documented. You know, it was fun watching that and seeing kind of some of, you know, the third person perspective of how that took place. Uh, you know, and a lot of fun again, having it documented of me getting this card that, you know, again. Hey, pick up my show. Enjoy my year. Enjoy Thank it. you very much. We landed it. We're lucky enough it was still here. I'm really excited. I was really nervous it was going to be gone. It's part of it. Right? The last five years. What a sick rail. Very happy to get it. Uh, I was hunting for this for a long time, was close on a couple of them, uh, you know, got cold feet on one, deal fell through on another, 
third time's a charm. So very happy to have this in my collection, a beautiful card. BGS9, again, this is a card that just does not come up often. I think when I was making the deal, uh, the last two copies I had sold were a PSA 8 and a PSA 9. Uh, you know, but prices have been all around the place over the last year on this card when it has come up for sale. I haven't seen any of the BGS copies come up for sale. I don't think there are many. Again, I'd have to look at the pop count, but uh, a card that I'm very happy to have in my collection. One of those that in the silver version, I thought was like just a perfect penny card because the silver and the star in the background really tie in with the Orlando star and how Penny was really perfectly centered there. Again, the silver in the jersey, the silver on the background, but then gold definitely steps up a notch, but even more so than the gold is the hollow foil in the pattern. You know, you can look at this from a lot of different angles and get different pieces. The hollow foil uh, shining through and the embossing, just a beautiful, beautiful card, gorgeous card, very rare. I can't remember, I'd have to actually ask, uh, you know, my my expert on estimated print runs is Michael Moeller. He's, uh, he's a wizard with that stuff, and I think he's got a good idea of how many uh, they estimated that they printed of this card uh, so i'll be curious to find that out if you know drop that down in the comments as well i'd love to i'd love to be refreshed uh but it's not many i think it's in the hundreds or less if i remember correctly so let me know if you've got an accurate number on that as well but again not sure uh you know an exact value i think before i picked mine up the last one of a bgs9 that had sold was a couple of years ago for like six grand or something like that so i don't think that price is going to hold firm uh but who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe it's more than that now. So, but that's the number one card in my collection at this point in time. Always fun to take a look at those top 10 cards. So very fun putting this list together. Very fun to share it with you and talk about the cards a little bit. Uh, and as you can see, the list was almost all Penny Hardaway. So uh, my Penny top 10 list, uh, you pretty much just saw it, but obviously we will do an update on that as it makes sense. I think the last time that we did just a Penny top 10 list was about six or seven months ago. You know, so usually I like to try to keep those to once per year. So we'll see uh, if my Penny collection changes and there are some new cards in that top 10 as the days and weeks and months go on uh, and it makes sense you know in that 12 month span but if we have to go a little bit longer we'll go a little bit longer whatever whatever makes sense but as always some of those other player top 10 lists will come out this year as well and I've got some uh, orders I have one order that's on its way back to me from PSA a very small order so we'll do that soon as soon as it comes in and I might sprinkle in another little surprise in there as well since it's a small order uh, it might not be worth just that one thing by itself but we'll see we'll see what we have in store uh so just a little bit of a teaser there there will be a surprise when that psa order comes back uh in that video as well so look forward to that so uh fun stuff coming up i'm really excited you know it's it's just been a fun year already and uh you know the summer is still going on i'm in my summer vibes uh but it's winding down to a close we're getting into the fall months uh so a lot of fun stuff still in store for this year. Uh, a lot of a lot of year to go still. <laughs> a lot of stuff has changed already. Uh, so if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Hit that bell icon so you don't miss any videos in the future. New videos dropping once, sometimes twice a week. We have looks into my PC, PSA and other grading reveals, 90s pack openings, occasional collector interviews, and so much more. Thanks. We'll talk later.